uh, we were discussing about like we we saw a different way to minimize any function uh, but what happens if the function is already given then based on that we can minimize them so that we can make the uh, the, we, uh, the smallest circuit so that the the complexity can be reduced but what happens suppose any particular uh, operation is given suppose i have uh, to add something i have to multiply something i have to divide something in that case uh, we need to design a circuits that can give this kind of operations or simply suppose i have to store some data uh, um, in the memory or like uh, in the lag so we need to design those kind of circuits so the designing is really very important so basically the logic circuits are designed uh, are uh, divided into two categories the first category is the uh, the combinational logic circuit yeah so let me uh, uh, explain those things so the logic circuits are divided into two categories the first one is the combinational logic circuit and the second one is the sequential logic circuit if we talk about the combinational logic circuit uh, they uh, they used to give output based on the present input they do not depends on the past value or past result whatever we have but if we talk about the sequential logic circuit the sequential logic circuit depends on the present input as well as the past output okay so there is the sequential logic circuit have some memory kind of feature memory kind of properties also exist there in the sequential circuit so uh, as of now we will start with the combinational logic circuit and later on we'll talk about the sequential logic circuit how to design those kind of circuit we'll uh, we'll see okay but further if we talk about the combinational logic circuit i just told you uh, they have an input they have some output and the output depends on the present input only they do not depends on the past outputs okay so those kind of circuits we can call them the combinational logic circuits now further the combinational logic circuits are divided into two categories the first category is the arithmetical logic circuit and the second one is the data processing logic circuit arithmetic logic circuit means suppose i have to perform some addition multiplication subtraction or division or this kind of operation in that case uh, we need to design some arithmetical logic circuit okay and those uh, kind of circuits uh, comes under this category which is arithmetical work similarly suppose i have to design some circuit in a such a way like suppose i am getting 10 inputs or a n number of inputs and i want to select any one or two particular in, uh, inputs only i don't want to select i suppose i have a 10 number of inputs or eight number of inputs and i want to pass only one input and based on the control signal okay so because we are selecting some of the inputs and we are processing it okay so those kind of uh, circuits or those kind of logic circuit we can call them the data processing because we are getting input on the eight uh, uh, like we are getting eight inputs and out of those inputs might be we can select one two or three based on our requirement okay so whatever the input we are receiving we are processing it and we are transferring it so those kind of combinational circuits are called the data processing logic circuits so we will see both kind of the combinational logic circuits so broadly we are getting three kind of circuits the one is the uh, the arithmetical logic circuit which is the uh, which is the part of combinational logic circuit second one is the data processing logic circuit which is also part of the combinational logic circuit and third one we will talk about the sequential logic circuit where we will talk about the flip flop latches and other things okay so let us start with the arithmetical logic circuits and uh, before arithmetic uh, explaining arithmetical logic circuit uh, i just wanted to give you a feel how we can design any circuit suppose i have a any uh, problem statement is given like i have to design a particular logic so how we can design it so let us try to check it out and then we will talk about the data processing or the uh, arithmetical logic circuits so suppose i have a problem okay so this is a simple problem that we can consider okay the problem is design a combinational logic circuit that has a three binary inputs and generates output as one if and only if the first condition is most significant bit is a zero and any one of other bit is one 
So this is the first case. So let us try to see it here. Suppose I want to design it. Okay. So the total, like I have a three uh, binary inputs. So the total number of possible combination will be eight. So zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 double, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, and one, one, one. So these are, are the mean term M zero, M one, M two, M three, M four, M five, M six, and M seven. Not, not let us discuss one by one. What this first condition says, the first condition says that most significant bit is zero and any one of the other bit is one. So the, this is the A is the most significant bit I'm considering. So this A is the most significant bit here. Okay. So this is zero and I have to find the combination from here only, right? So, so the most significant bit is zero and any one of the other bit is one. So I'm getting three combinations, this combination, this combination and this combination, uh, any one of the other input is any one, sorry, not two. Okay. So any one like here I'm getting, so this should be zero. This should be uh, like uh, this combination will fall under this category. This combination will fall under this category. So I need to key, I need to write one here on these both the conditions. Okay. So uh, this is what I need to right one and one okay now let us try to see the second case second case says second bit is zero and any one of the other bit is one okay second bit is zero and any one of the other bit is one so second bit is zero means this is the combination this is the combination and any one of the other bit is zero. Any one of the other bit is zero means? Uh, uh, any one of the other bit is one means, like here I'm getting this combination. Uh, I'm getting this combination. So this will become one. Okay. All the M4. bits, yes? Sir, M4, M4 will come. M4 will come. Second bit is zero and any one of the other bit is one. Yeah, M4 will also be there. Yes, perfect. M4 will also be there. Second bit is zero and any one of the other bit is one. So let me, uh, so uh, we need to check like the second bit is zero and any one of the bit is one. So in this case, uh, we have to consider both the conditions like uh, uh, two are one. Uh, so any other means like uh, we are considering uh, this one as a one. So you're talking about M5, right? Yes, sir. So any one means uh, it is not saying like both or uh, uh, only one. So it is saying any one. So any one means like uh, either this one or this one or both. So if this is the case, then we have to keep one. I think uh, we need to check the first condition as well. Let us try to see it. First condition says that most significant bit is one and any one of the other bit is one. So any one of the other bit is one means uh, M3, will I, I, M3 will also be one. M3 will also be one. Yes. So M3 will also be one here. Now let us try to check the third case. All the bits are one. All the bits are one means uh, here M7 will, M7 will become one. Okay. So these are all the combinations that we need to uh, uh, Jayant is saying like so that is clear. I am asking like if in place of second bit it is third bit, then what will be the answer? Uh, you are talking about the second combination, Jayant? Second uh, case? Okay. So in that case, like uh, you, uh, the Jayant is asking like uh, in the second option, if it is given like uh, uh, instead of this second, if it is written third, so third bit is zero. So we'll need to consider from these combinations. Okay. We'll consider these combinations and we will check, uh, 
uh, what are the conditions whether i am getting uh, any other bits are one or not so uh, in that case i will uh, i will get this one this one this will this one will also be there this one also be there so m6 and m4 and m2 will become one if you are talking about third case doubt is clear james yes 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 of course so take it out right so we always always have to consider from the msp okay so let me clear few things okay so based on the first case we are getting uh, a three outputs one and based on the second case we are getting two outputs one and based on the third case we are getting one output one so if this is the case all other bits will be zero okay zero 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 will be there so now if you see here so the function looks like this one so uh, yeah uh, the function will be f a b c is the summation of m uh, 1 2 then 3 4 5 and 7 so this will be the uh, function now if you try to implement on this uh, k map then it will look like this one 1 2 3 4 5 and 7 okay now let us try to make the pair how we can make the pairs so the first could be can anyone tell me what are the pairs which are possible here what are the one, pairs? Three, five, seven. one three five seven is the biggest one that we need to consider this is the chord that we can make yes perfect okay so this is one of the possible uh, pair the second possible pair that we can make is this one yeah this is the only option that we can make and this is the only option that we can make so we have uh, one quad and two pairs okay so based on that if we try to solve then the uh, the output y will be one is from here like a will be cancelled out and b will be cancelled out so we will uh, uh, we will get only c so c plus if you see this one from here uh, the c will be cancelled out i will get a b bar a b bar and from here uh, the c will be cancelled out i will get a bar b okay i will get a bar b now if we closely see this one okay uh, what kind of logic this one is can anyone tell me which kind of function this is xor this is xor logic perfect because a b bar plus a bar b that gives you the xor kind of function okay so you can say y is equal to c plus a xor b okay so this is the final function that we are getting so if we try to implement this function so we need one xor gate that we have to give a and b and then whatever the results i am getting from a and b i need to or it with the c and that is what we will get the output c so this is how the circuit will look like so um, is doubts are clear like how we can design the circuit if you have any doubt on any, at any place of time then you can ask the question so simply like we have to simply see what question says and based on that we need to write the output based on the output how many outputs we have we need to write the function and then we need to solve the k map and accordingly we will get the uh, simplified function uh, to design this particular circuit okay so whatever the problem we have this one we have a three input and one output and this is the module and if the input will change accordingly we will, we will get the output okay so this is what uh, the first problem is now let us talk about the second problem okay so we can have a 
another problem as well. So let us try to. Sir, yeah, please. Sir, in this question, uh, we can consider POS form also. Yes, of course, we can consider. Only two terms yes, are coming. Sir. Yes, yes, of course, we can consider. So just you need to check this one. So from here, I, I will get A plus B plus C and into then from here, I will get uh, A bar plus B bar plus C. Yeah, this is also possible. So there is no problem with it. You can also consider this one. Uh, which one is more beneficial? Just you need to check. Uh, let, let, let me make the KMF for this condition. And now you need to check uh, uh, minimum number of gates needed for that. Like, okay, so this is our objective. We need to make the minimum, uh, like we need to use minimum number of gates. So 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So A plus B plus C. So here I will uh, make 0. And uh, next one is 6. So here the pair will be there, right? So now if you see, uh, these pairs are not possible. We cannot zeros. Okay, so independently we have to design this circuit. So if I want to design this A plus B plus C, then what I need? I need one R gate. Okay, having three inputs, and I need one another R gate having three inputs, and then I need one end gate to simplify this one. Okay, so this is how we can implement this one. Now, if you see the complexity of this function, the SOP form. So we will consider the SOP. Okay. okay you got sir. the answer? Yes, sir. Okay. So basically, uh, you can consider any of the logic. Like uh, either you see this kind of structure uh, is giving complex kind of like three gates are needed and also three input and in, uh, R gate is needed. Okay, so this will become more complex than this one. Okay, so we'll recommend go for the SOP. But maybe there may be some combination where, like see, that completely depends on uh, at the output, what is the probability of zero or probability of one? If the probability of zero is more than uh, the, uh, the, uh, the possibility of making pair is higher. Okay, and if the possibility of making pair is higher, what it means? It means that uh, you need to go for the SOP form. Similarly, if the more number of zeros are there, like more than 50% zeros are there, in that case, uh, uh, what you can do, you can go for the POS form because you will get more chances to make the pair with the zeros. Okay, so this completed, yeah, this is a simple thumb rule. If more number of ones, more pair can be done. You can make more pairs and the, the, you will get more simplified output uh, and vice versa. Point is clear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. So always consider this thing in our mind. Like suppose if I have a three input, three variables. So total possibilities will be eight. Okay. So if the, uh, at the output, if like in all the outputs, like suppose in this case, I have only one output, right? So I will consider only one output. Might be there may be some question where we, are, we have a two output. So maybe I have a three inputs and two outputs. So I will check, like I will sum up all the zeros and all the ones at the output and we will see what is the probability. And based on that, we can decide whether I need to go with the SOP or with the POS. Okay. So this is the thing that you should remember. Okay. So <laughs> let me clear a few things, then we can move ahead. Okay, perfect. Let us consider one more example and then you will be able to understand what we are doing here. Next question is design a four bit once complement or buffer. So I have to design a simple circuit that can act as a complement. So suppose four inputs, like suppose I have a four input A, a B, C, and D, and I want to make a design that can give a a complemented output means A complement, B complement, C complement, or D complement. And the same circuit, I want to use it like that can act as a ABCD. So after passing through that circuit, like, like a buffer. Okay. So uh, 
I have to design a four bit ones complement buffer or uh, one complement or the buffer circuit using XNOR gate with one control signal that activate the circuit. Okay. So one control signal means this control signal will decide whether I have to use this circuit as a complement or I have to use it as a buffer. Okay. So we know that we, we, uh, we have already studied the, the property of the XNOR logic. Okay. So let us assume this is the XNOR logic and A, B are the two inputs and Y is the output. In that case, what is the truth table? Two table says that, like, uh, what is the two table? Can anyone tell me what is the two table of the X? One zero zero one. One double zero one. Perfect. One zero zero one. Now, if you see here, in this case, if a any of one of the input is zero, in that case, I am getting this like this X or X nor gate will act as an inverter. Okay, and if any one of the input is connected to the logic one. In that case, I am getting the same output, whatever the input is. So what I have to do, I have to simply, can anyone tell me what, uh, how I can make it the four bit circuit? Can anyone suggest how we can make it? So that can be used as a one. Anyone? Sir, okay, we can go. use five five inputs. Five inputs in a single gate. Mm, so that one can be the controller and other can be. No, yeah. but but uh, uh, the output will be only one. If you have five inputs, but I need also the four output. Like I just told you, if I have an input A, B, C, D, and I want A bar, B bar, C bar, and D bar. So you will get only one output. So that will not be, that will not solve your purpose. Got the point? Yes, sir. So what is the other alternative that we can do? Can we use more number of XOR, XNOR gate? Yeah, you try to use more number of XNOR gate and then try to say, tell me like what should be the way by which we can do that. So four gates can be used. Four gate can be used. A, B, C, D as uh, input in each and one uh, enable so that all can be controlled with it. And the enable will be controlled with the single input, right? Yes, sir. Perfect. Absolutely correct. So let us try to see. Okay. So suppose this is the first input. This is the second one. This is third and fourth one. And now what I have to do? I have to connect one uh, any one of the input that will act as a control signal and that will be common. Okay. And all other inputs are like uh, X0, X1, X2, X3. And the output will be X3, X2, X, like uh, Y3, Y2, Y1, and Y0. Okay. And this control signal will act as a, like this, the next input will act as a control signal. So let us assume. Uh, that signal, let us assume this is the Z. Okay. So if Z is equal to zero, then it will act as a inverter. It will act as a once complement. Okay. So then it will act as a once complement. Okay. And if Z is equal to one, then it will act as a buffer okay so this is how we can design a simple circuit okay like uh, uh, the simple circuit we have we can utilize it so see why i am just giving this kind of example because all the logic gates whatever we have studied before those are utilized to design all these things now the important thing is whatever we have done here this, this we are just simply seeing the uh, the property of this xnor gate and we are designing it but this is not the correct way, actually. Whatever I am just teaching you, this is not the correct way. The correct way is uh, you have to uh, just write the input combination. Like if I have a four inputs, in that case, I need to write all the four out input combinations, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, something like that, up to 1, 1, 1, 1. And I need to take the output 
like this let us assume this is the x3 x2 x1 and x0 and similarly you will get output y3 y2 y1 and y0 and if you see here if the input is this one and i need output that should be something like 1 1 1 1 and if input is 0 0 0 1 then output should be 1 1 1 0 and so on that you will come up to 0 0 0 0 now what you have to do you have to solve the kmf for y3 kmf for y2 kmf for y1 and kmf for y0 and then you will get the actual circuit requirement you will get some function and that function will tell you what kind of circuit is needed okay so this is the actual way that we are going to do in the uh, next few uh, slides later on. okay uh, i just give given this feel how you can design the circuit but the actual way is this one which i just told you you have to write the input combinations you have to write the output combination based on the requirement then you have to solve the kmf for the output remember this thing what i am saying this is really very important thing uh, that i am saying suppose uh, there are some questions that may be asked like i have to design uh, a binary to xor uh, a binary to gray code converter i have to design a binary to gray code converter if we can recall the previous lectures there we what based on the formula we just make made a circuit like uh, xor gates are needed and then i have to connect the input but that was the not the perfect way based on the uh, the formula we did it but the actual way is suppose i have to design any circuit that can convert the binary to gray code so what i have to do suppose i am considering three bit binary so i need to write on the input side i have to write all the input combinations from 000 to 111 and then on the output side i will get like y1 uh, y, y2 y1 and y0 and that we need to write the gray code of all the binary codes and then i need to solve the kmf for all the output uh, bits whatever we have and then we will get some expression and then we need to create the, th the circuit so this is the actual way okay so we'll see it later on uh, how it could be done i think you got the idea what i'm saying okay so uh, whatever we just did it this is the shortcut trick to do that but yeah this is only possible if we know the property but if you, i have to design the complex uh, uh, combinational circuit in that case a direct way is not possible you need to follow the actual procedure whatever we have okay so that you have to consider so uh, here is one uh, exercise that i am giving and that you have to uh, solve it at home this is the homework uh, the similar kind of whatever we have just studied that you can also go through it and you can check it out